All right, man, you ready to do this? Let's get it. Jamie, you ready to go to work, man? All right, look, you play too much. Time. It is time. It is time. You know what that sound means? Time to get to work. You don't know what that sound means? That means that the black market is open, man. This bell attracts money to the business. OK, they all want green. Yeah, I see. Man, look at what is this suit you got on, man. <laughs> man, I got this uh, from ASOS, actually. Man, stand up. This suit look real <laughs> fucking untrustworthy. I just want I'm them to see it. Cause my my audience like to laugh at shit like that, bro. You spent a lot of money on this shit too, then. Nah, nah, nah. I'm a smart shopper. Uh, this I suit, know, dude. You bought that shit a size This suit don't call no more than buy. Little bit of ass suit. Hey, not wear it these days. Suit. Your shoes bigger than your suit. Y'all, y'all got Burn shoes too. Somebody, somebody <laughs> pick the camera up and get this suit. Cause this shit ridiculous, man. I wouldn't have you on here like that. <laughs> The fuck did you come out of a tube, my nigga? <laughs> they squeeze this nigga out of toothpaste, too. <laughs> Sit your ass down, bro. Hey, where the hell you out here just wearing little suits? Man, just get a little tie yeah. to go with it. Yup, skinny tie. That's how I know you ain't getting money, bro. When you wear a suit like that, you don't give a fuck about no job no more. Man, you, you crazy, man. But you, you, you right, though. You're supposed to be on American Horror Story or something. Nah. <laughs> what happened? Some nigga in a little green suit got me. <laughs> I don't know what happened after that. No, man, I'm just messing with you, though. You yeah. know it's all in good fun. I'm a comedian, though. Oh, wait. But welcome to the black market slash trap. It's the black market in the daytime. Then it's a trap at night. Man. Okay. I heard you've been very successful over there. Got one of the number one electronics repair stores in Atlanta. Founder, CEO, level 10 repairs. My man, AJ Dewberry. Hey, yo, yo. Welcome, welcome. How you been? Been good, man. Been good. Just been grinding and been just continuously mentoring and trying to inspire others to do the same thing. Man, give them a brief rundown on how you how you got here to this point. It's crazy how it started. So at first, I was a supervisor at UPS. I was a senior in what college. What does the supervisor at UPS even do? Uh, at UPS, we I was just watching other people telling them what to do. Cause we I used to load trucks. Oh, wow. So that's what I started out doing. I was loading trucks, and then I got promoted from there to be a supervisor. How did I don't know. Damn, AJ, you's a truck load motherfucker. <laughs> hey, we got something hey. else for you. You too good at this truck load. <laughs> hey, but yeah, I uh, I ended up getting employed a month, like my, my third month there. Hell no. Yeah, and then like two Pitch months on the after wall that. And everything. I don't know why I have my certificate, nah. What'd they give you for that? Just a certificate? Uh, I had like a twenty dollars so what you can get for it. So. You your ass <laughs> off for a month for it. Yeah. Two subs. Yeah. Damn. You know, they probably got a lot, though. But, right. Yeah, I only got two subs. Yeah. But now, let me ask you this, though, as a business owner, do you see, like, how incentives like that can motivate the people that work for you? It can but it's, don't give away. them the $20 shit, but I'm saying, like, people like to be rewarded yeah. for their hard work. Yeah. And make them go harder, and then, you know, it just... Make it them build, feel like they're a part of something. Yeah, they build the trust, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, you know, they can be like, well, I know you're going to look out for me, so... You know, I don't, I don't got no reason to even think about going against you. Yeah, it bring so, the best out of people. Yeah. Okay, so you do that, and then what? What happens after after you decide, I ain't employee of the month, especially for no $20? <laughs> after that, um, I was just talking to him because I had wanted to go corporate when I graduated. Because at that time, by employee of the month, it was like the beginning of my senior year. At high school? No, college. Oh, okay. I was yeah. about to say, ain't no way in the hell I'm about to let my supervisor be in the 12th grade. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I wish, though. Hey. <laughs> I, oh, I, by the way, I was the youngest supervisor at the Forest Park Hub. Okay, but so, I yeah. I did that. So I say about yeah, two months after the employer of the month, you know, he would just talk to me about being a supervisor. I'm like, yeah, I'll take the test or whatever. That way I can move on up. Cause you gotta be a supervisor so you can get in the hub to go corporate. Okay. So 
I took all the tests and everything and it came out pretty good. So a month later, that's when it started. But I'm thinking I'm gonna have less stuff to do, but that would really give me more stuff to do. Right. Like, yeah, I was watching everybody else being sure they did what they had to do too. But then I have to go inside and I gotta do computer work. I'm like, I gotta do computer work now. Right. So I gotta, you know, I gotta pick up my people's slack and stuff like that. But it really was a learning lesson for me because right. it taught me everything that I use in my business now as far as my employees and how I move, do things for my staff. Right. When did you establish your business and what was the driving force behind it? Um, so three months after I was a supervisor came spring break. So it was like March of my senior year. Uh, me and my cousin, we had went to L.A., been out there, it made me dream. I'm like, damn, I want to live like these people. I said, I want to just ride in my car and not, you know, care or have to clock in and nobody. I just want to be on my own terms. I literally came back. And I just said I got my refund check, too. That's how I ever go exactly. at Cali and all that. Exactly. So that was my last refund check. So I'm like, I need to do something with this money. So I just did short work. They were calling me, blowing me up. They no like, call, no shit. You know, UPS, they got like counseling. They got like a whole bunch of different stuff for you. They're like, do you need to see one of our counselors and all that? I'm like, nah, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all good. So they like, I don't know what's wrong with him, man. He the young supervisor. He about to go corporate. He just quit. Like, what's wrong with him? So they really thought something wrong. But I just had a vision that only I had at that time. When yeah. I first told my parents I quit, my dad told me I was stupid. He was like, you got a good job, you know, stuff like that. I should have stayed with it. My mom, she she always trusted me. She was like, I know you're going to do what you got to do. Right. Because I, I never been a type to call home and need something. Right. So that's why she felt that. She was like, well, she know I'm going to handle my business. Um, so that's when I just went home and I struggled on Instagram. And I'm like, hmm, I want to do something in innovative. And I said, I can either do a short print business, a photography business, or I can do cell phone repair. I had somewhat experience in all those things. So I'm like, I know if I you know, put my all in one of those, I can get work. Yeah. When did you get your experience in, you know, your experience in repairing phones? I had tried to fix my, old, my first phone was iPhone 4. This was my like, freshman, the sophomore year of college. I had one screen off Amazon and I tried to fix it and it didn't work. It actually started smoking. <laughs> yeah, it had started smoking. And then from there, I just had ordered another screen. I'm like, I get this phone to work. So then it worked. So from there, that was like my, you know, a little experience that I had. But I was like, I know if I can get that to so work. You just went out like, I fixed it myself. Yeah. I quit my job before I knew what I was going to do. Yeah. Like, it really was like, it's a blessing for real. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah, so once I actually figured out what I was going to do, I just started doing like a lot of research on Instagram, on YouTube and stuff. YouTube University taught me everything. Shout out to YouTube University. YouTube University no taught excuses, me everything. I know. No excuses. No excuses. And it's crazy because I graduated that same semester, but yeah, YouTube taught me everything. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I literally was on YouTube for about uh, four to five hours a day. And I'll get like everybody old cell phones, all my friends old phones, iPhone five, sixes, and now I'll just be taking them apart and putting them back together. I didn't have my screens yet. I had ordered screens off eBay. I don't want them doing to come in, but in the meantime, you know, I found, I found like some gla a glasses tool kit. So I was just using that to open and just get, build my own experience until everything came I needed. Um, with me, doing everything by myself without a mentor, I end up spending too much money on stuff I didn't need. So uh, I ain't up spending about 5500 for everything, but I only need to spend like 2000 Damn. Yeah. But, you know, I still had everything I needed anyway, so I just kept perfecting my craft, kept working, kept building. So I would spend, like I said, 45 hours a day on YouTube and just hands-on learning. After that, I would get on Craigslist and Instagram, post ads for like an hour, consistently. Um, on Instagram, I was running up my followers. I had got up to 7,500, because they wouldn't let me follow more than 7,500 people at the time. And I just had a picture that I stole off Google, or it's a whole bunch of cracked screens on the floor. So I posted that picture, and I was just following people. So they get saw a screen, well, cracked screens, and it said, come soon from my couch. So, you know, they saw some stuff by my bio, but I didn't say it was me. I didn't pick my name and then in there. I just had them thinking it was a random person. Because at first I was thinking like I just want to, you know, build my brand. Because that was what I mainly focused on. So I ended up right. coming up with a brand called Level 10. And today, <clears throat> uh, Level 10 consists of, you know, repairs, Level 10 and Friends, which is my nonprofit, 
Level 10 Music, which is a music group that I have. Okay. So at that time, like I was like, I wanted to get start something because I was engineering right. at that time too. I had artists I was engineering for. So at that time, you I'm just do thinking, it all. Somewhat. Yeah. <laughs> so at that time, I'm thinking like I'm gonna have a phone shop and I'm gonna have a studio in the back. I'm gonna draw it on a sheet of paper. I'm in my apartment still. Yeah. I'm, I'm, um, this is before I even went out and my first phone. I'm already just drawing everything. Got just really envisioning why I want to, why I want it to be. And I'm setting deadlines to get stuff done so I can get that too. Cause so you, you got to set goals. It like you already got it, just even in the building yeah. phase. Oh, I had watched Wolf of Wall Street too. I, I saw that movie literally like two weeks before I quit my job, and that helped inspire it too. Yeah. But um. So yeah, I'm just, like I said, it's really with a time management for me because I had to adapt to being on my own time too. You know, it's not like I can just go in the building and I gotta be here at this time, here at this time, here at this time. I really had to sit down and set my own schedule. Right. Like be like, well, I'm waking up at nine, like I would go and work my job and I need to do this and this time, this and that time. And the whole time I started my business, I'm still in college. I'm still in school trying to do homework, um, riding the campus, knocking out classes, all that. Um, and then, so summer, that's when I finished right. school. Um, I ended up grinding up enough to, from my business, to pay my own tuition. So it was just me, like, really just trying to just complete everything I was starting, honestly. So that's the inception, the beginning. Like, yeah. what made you, what was the next step taking it to the next level? So at three weeks after I quit my job, I'm just training, training, training. That's when I first launched the business. So April 22nd, 2015, that was the very first day I was mobile. And I made a mistake. And it was a blessing at the same time because of the learning experience. Right. So I did 50% off everything <laughs> my first two days in business. But I was booked, open and closed. But that's why I was doing 50% off. I ain't made no money. Right. But I built word of mouth. And because I was young and I was trying to do something with myself, people, they love to see it. So they just start spreading the word to other people and really word of mouth helped me more than anything. Yeah. Seriously. What's your IG and all that now? Like, how um, can they get in touch with you? Uh, you can follow the business page at Level 10 Repairs. Yeah. That's number 10, L-E-V-E-L, one zero R-E-P-A-I-R-S. Um, or me at AJ underscore Dewberry. Okay, you gotta tell me some more about your other businesses that you got also. Yo, yo, yo. So you got music group, what else? Is serial investor? Basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do a little real estate. Nah, so. right, like what's your educational background? You're a well-spoken man, you smart apparently, you know what I mean? Yeah. Not apparently, shit, we seeing it in motion, so it's like. What's crazy is, like I come from a family where my father didn't graduate high school, my mom, all she did was graduate. Yeah. So I don't really come from, you know what I'm saying, too much education. Like when I was in high school, getting ready to go to college, it was just me and my counselors. Yeah. Like, I didn't have no help. You know what I'm saying? I really, I just tried to really change where I was at. Uh, I went to Albany State okay. at first. At yeah. first? Yeah. And then yeah. when I moved to Atlanta, I had um, finished at Clean State. Okay, Clean yeah. State. And I moved to Atlanta because I wanted to start a business. I didn't know what I was going to start. I was thinking I'd probably do some real estate or something like that. But you my business should. was different. I mean, yeah, I do. I do here and now. That's what I was about to tell you, though. I was asking about your educational background. It's like, mm -hmm. bro, you, it's something about you. You got a light, man. Don't stop. Like, you a young man, bro. Try to take over as much of this shit as you can. Like, yeah. the way that you're self-educated, self-motivated, driven. Bro, you got unlimited potential. Yeah. Especially if you keep your same outlook and don't get jaded by the world, bro. You know how hard it is to do anything, especially something by yourself. And from the ground up, and you having the know-how and you know the intuition to put this with this and to make that happen, bro. I can't do nothing but salute that man. Keep please, it. please, please, please. Yeah. yeah, man. So let them know where they can get in touch with you, how they can come spend some money with you. Oh yeah. Sign to the music group or okay, do some okay. investing or whatever it is that you might be doing at the moment. All right. We have three store locations. We have one downtown Atlanta at 212 Pride Street, right by the courthouse. Everybody know where the jail in Atlanta at. We literally walk a distance right across the street. Right. We have a location in Tower Boulevard in Jonesboro, Georgia, right on the south side, and one down in Griffith, Georgia, my hometown. And we do things like fit cell phones, fits the back glasses of the phones, cameras, batteries, everything. We cell phones, buy phones, tablets, computers. 
So if you got Apple all the old iPads and, and MacBooks sitting around mm -hmm. at the crib, you don't know what to do with them, holla at this young man right here. He can put that back together for you. I'm about to take him my, um, I got the Apple with the big back. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> the see-through joint now. Yeah. Now, nah, man, we're going to make sure that we, that we blow your business up and we, you know, people know exactly how to get in touch with you. My dog, his phone broke right now. I'm going to see what you can give us an estimate at least. You got to come see me. I got you. Nah, I ain't bad, man. And I know everybody want to upgrade to the iPhone 14, too, so you we got doing some? special right now. We're doing $100 to fix the back glass over your current phone if it broke. You got a 13 or 12 that's broke. You want to trade in? We're doing a special for $100. My man, AJ Dubell, level 10 repairs. The black market is open. Here you talking about. <laughs> Get you a suit like AJ! <laughs> <laughs>